Good morning, guten morgen, magendanumaga, konnichiwa, bonjour. So today I'd like to share a part of my testimony that is probably going to be quite unusual to most people. Um, yesterday, after I was done cleaning at the restaurant in the morning, I brought my little dog with me. Um, he has a backpack carrier so sometimes when I'm going to go visit my family directly after work I bring him along so after I was done cleaning at the restaurant um, I drove to the next two towns over um, in the same state of Massachusetts to see uh, my son he's 11 my, my eldest daughter and my youngest son live in one house and then my middle daughter lives um, in Connecticut with my other ex-husband. I have two ex-husbands, which part of the um, testimony that's unusual is I get along quite well with both of them. We, um, we don't agree necessarily on how to raise the children but um, I don't overly impose because they're not living with me so I try to plant good seeds and I try to be a good example instead of saying do as I say not as I do I just um, yeah I don't claim to be a good mother I used to, before I became born again, I had this view of, I was a victim, <clears throat> it's their fault, not mine, and I would place the blame on other people. It's a very common thing, but um, when the Lord gave me eyes to see um, the things that I used to do, I was far from being a good mother. So, and it's, it's, it's the, I have loads of regrets, basically, things that I can't take back, things I can't redo, and it does make me sad <clears throat> to a certain extent. I mean, I went through the deep sadness, um, and, and went through, um, like a mourning period <clears throat> at the beginning of my walk but the Lord made me understand it's part of my testimony, the old me. And then once I became born again in Christ, um, he made me into a new creation. It's to glorify the Lord. <clears throat> it has nothing to do with me necessarily. But anyways, long story short, the reason why I'm telling you um, what happened yesterday, I went to visit my son the first part of the day spending time with him and then I drove to Connecticut uh, my daughter uh, has a part-time job now my middle daughter is 20 and she works as a, as a cashier so it's her first job and um, she worked 10 to 2 yesterday so I went and visited around 2 30 yesterday so as I was driving home, when I drive to a location or from a location, I don't always have my um, radio on. Sometimes I'm driving in silence and um, I take that opportunity to recap either what happened that day or a thought I had and I talk to the Lord about it. And I know that may sound unusual to people who don't have a relationship with the Lord. Like, you would probably view it as, so you're talking to yourself in the car. <laughs> but no, I know that the Lord, I know 100%. 100% the Lord is with me. I know that He hears me. I know that He understands me. And this is, this is what I'd like to share. 
the unique part, I think, or the unusual part of my testimony that I don't necessarily hear other Christians talk about. Other Christians talk about their loneliness and they talk about it in a very um, negative way that like it's a bad thing, their, their isolation, their loneliness. Well, I feel the complete opposite, actually. Um, and I'll try to explain this uh, the best I can. <laughs> Sorry. So I've been, my entire life, I'm 46. So I've had a lot of experience outside being married and divorced twice. I had a lot of different interactions and relationships with a lot of different people. You could view me as a whore, basically. I had a lot of relationships. Um, some of them didn't last long at all. Um, you, you, you could even say the one night stand is a, you know, that's very short. So, I've had a lot of experience. Again, you could say that I was an adulterous whore. It's okay. You know, it's part of my testimony. So, throughout my life, honestly, I was looking to fill a void. I was insatiable. I had a hunger. I had a need for something, but I didn't know what it was. And I always tried to fill that void. And to, I, I, I was chasing after, um, I was looking for fulfillment through other people because I felt like I needed something. I didn't know what I needed. I needed an intellectual conversation per se. But then I would find people that they were good looking, but they weren't very deep. They didn't have a lot to say. They didn't um, have uh, critical thinking. They kind of just was going with whatever the world's narrative was, didn't ask any questions. And I was the type of person where I always had questions. I, I never ran out of things to talk about, but I also was the type of person where I would go through periods of being silent or quiet or to myself. There was a lot of instances where different people would tell me how they would view me. They, they'd say that I was very mysterious because there would be periods where I would listen more to what people would say and I wouldn't really add anything to it. Um, I really made an effort not to talk at people or over people. Um, but I also had ADHD that if a thought popped into my head, sometimes I would interrupt people because that thought would come and go really quickly and if I didn't get it out, it would have been gone. <laughs> so sometimes I did interrupt people. Long story short, I'm driving home last night with the Lord, talking and being grateful for my isolation and being grateful and appreciate the so-called loneliness because recapping over my life, when I was trying to fill that void, the void was Christ. When I was trying to fill that emptiness, the emptiness was Christ because what I was looking for as I was looking for my best friend, someone who understood me, someone who I didn't have to overly explain things or I didn't have to um, calm someone else's insecurities about when I am quiet, you know, say I was with someone, um, someone else was with me in the car and I'm being quiet. 
because I just feel like being quiet. A lot of times that person would take that as, is she mad at me? Is she irritated? What's wrong with her? Does she have a problem with me? And I would have that throughout my entire life. I would have people um, assume, because I didn't understand the spiritual warfare. It was the spirits inside other people's vessels that would be making them insecure that something was going on in this end and nothing was going on on this end. I wasn't mad. I wasn't um, irritated or anything. I just didn't feel like talking. So last night when I was going through um, thinking about the things, the experiences that I had when I was in relationships, and the insecurity of others, the, the lying spirits that would poke at them and irritate them to start something dramatic with me on this end, where I felt like I had to defend myself for doing something I didn't do, or think something I didn't think, or feel something I wasn't feeling. So I, I felt like um, it was a never-ending battle. I mean, because every single person outside yourself is very insecure and has a lying spirit that does poke them, uh, that does get them their mind, that, that puts thoughts in their minds that are untrue, basically. Because again, this is a spiritual warfare and Satan's roaming around like a lion looking to devour you through your crown your mind, your temple. Satan wants to take throne here. And Satan's doing so by making people think things that are untrue and believing it and having faith in it and, and following through. So my gratitude last night was I took a deep breath and I was in peace because now I'm with someone, Christ, who understands me. I can be quiet. Um, I, I'm not worried that Christ is going to look at my facial expressions and think something that's untrue. Or when, when I sound like I'm irritated, I'm just excitable about whatever I'm talking about, but Christ knows my heart my heart condition, that I don't have to overly explain with words because he knows me. He knew me before I was even born. So this is what I was looking for and I found it. That I don't share the same testimonies of loneliness that other Christians seem to express that they have. I'm not lonely. I have Christ with me. I know that he's with me. And whenever I feel like talking to him, I don't have to use colorful words and overly explain myself. He knows what I'm talking about. And I don't feel like I'm being judged and misunderstood. And it's a beautiful, peaceful place that my yoke is light, that I actually am happy and grateful that I'm not unequally yoked in a relationship with someone during this time. That I'm not looking for, you know, there's a, a lie going around about kingdom spouses and that's another spirit that's influencing another group of people that are being tempted because now is the hour of temptation. And those of us who have his Holy Spirit, we're not being tempted by the same lying spirits because his sheep hear his voice and we follow truth only. It's not a literal voice. I, do, I never have heard a literal voice when it comes to interacting with the Lord. I just, following his sheep hear my voice means I know truth when I hear it. And I stay in truth and follow truth and follow my shepherd, my Lord, my King only. So I hope I plant a good seed that 
If you are feeling lonely and isolated, maybe you need to reconsider or have more faith that the Lord is with you. You're not alone. You're not alone when you're walking with Christ. You are with someone who understands you better than anyone on this earth could ever understand you. I love you and God bless.